Hi, I'm Laura Lawton with Lawton Printing Services. Welcome to Candidate Confidential. We're happy to have you join us. We're happy to join Spokane Talks Online for this important civic service. The Lawton team has been serving the Inland Northwest for over 77 years. What keeps us motivated is the continuous evolution of our company to better serve the clients we work with every day. We are also fortunate to have so many people willing to step up to serve our communities. Being a candidate and civil servant is too often a thankless job. I know you join me in thanking these forward-thinking individuals for their dedication to us all. With that, I thank you for taking the time to learn more about the people who want to lead our communities. Enjoy the debate and give Lawton a call for any of your marketing, printing, or mailing needs. Thank you. On behalf of Spokane Talks Online, welcome to Candidate Confidential. My name is John McCallum. I will be your host today, uh, and we are, I am, and we are very pleased to have Shirley Mikey and Michael Suniga joining us. They are the two candidates for Medical Lake Mayor, and we're going to be talking about some of the issues um, regarding uh, Medical Lake today. Uh, but first, we're going to take a quick break and uh, have a word from our sponsor, and we'll be right back with the issues. Proposition 2 is not about politics, it's about protecting Spokane's economy. I'm opposed to Proposition 2. I'm opposed to Prop 2. I'm opposed to Proposition 2. Proposition 2 just doesn't make sense. I am opposing Proposition 2. I'm against Proposition 2. I'm opposed to Proposition 2. I'm opposed to Prop 2 because we have to protect Spokane's economy. As promised, we're back uh, with Shirley Mikey and Michael Zuniga. And um, Shirley, we're going to have you go first with our first uh, topic, which is uh, on the uh, subject of law enforcement and crime. And as you know, you've uh, been there's been a lot of talk in Medical Lake about the possibility of the return of the Medical Lake Police Department. You're currently uh, under contract with the uh, Spokane County Sheriff's Office. And uh, so we'd just like to have you give us your thoughts on that. Um, you know, whether you're for it or, or you're happy with the, the sheriff's office or, and, you know, if you want to go forward with it, what would you, what do you think that would look like? I've been on the council, uh, when we had a police department and then when we made the decision to go to the sheriff's office for services, we had, uh, great difficulty recruiting officers, uh, finding a police chief, and we realized we could not afford, um, to have that struggle of having vacant officers. So we entered into the contract with the sheriff. I am pleased with the services we provide. We do have 24 seven coverage in Medical Lake. Um, they respond to our needs, the, their response time is good. And I think we should continue that contract. We cannot afford to have our own police department. It would cost over a million dollars just in staffing to have a police chief, officers, uh, coverage for training, vacation, sickness, support staff. Um, that doesn't even take into account vehicles, vehicle maintenance, weapons, equipment, that type of thing. So we really cannot afford to have our own police department. Um, so I think the coverage we're getting with the sheriff is good. We look at the contract continuously and if we see something that needs to be changed, we identify if it's going to be a cost, where that cost would come from, the income would come from to pay for that cost and um, then we proceed. But we, we need to do a better job of educating our citizens about the coverage that is provided in town and the cost of what it would be to have our own police department and also the liability that is incurred on a city with the police department. Police departments all over the country are getting sued and what is our, would be our liability for um, having an, a, a police department back again. So you're happy and you want to continue going I'm happy forward with, and the, I want with to the contract continue. and everything? Yes. Okay. Yes. Michael? Well, I believe that the Sheriff's Department does a great job. Ozzy Knezovich is a, is a great leader with the Sheriff's Department, and it's a big organization. With a big organization, you miss a lot of the small town stuff. Um, I believe that based on my background and my experience in law enforcement that we can have a police department. We can uh, fund a police department. It would be almost the same cost or a little bit reduced. But not only that, but we would have more services out there. We would have more police officers out on the road longer with that. And uh, 
in regards to some of those tough decisions, you know, lawsuits are unfortunately with law enforcement is just inevitable. They always go to the deepest pockets. Uh, just because the sheriff's department has our law enforcement services doesn't preclude the city from liability from uh, an incident that happens with the sheriff's department. Um, in short, when we had our police department, we had about an $800,000 budget for seven officers and an administrative assistant. Right now, we pay about $836,000 for uh, police services, and last year we paid $936,000. So for one deputy, a total of four deputies, 24 hours a day, excuse me, one deputy, uh, 12 hours a day for a total of four deputies, we're paying $836,000, which equates to about $200,000. $210,000 uh, per deputy. That That's not good math to me. And uh, as part, when I go in there, I would like to explore those options and have those town hall meetings and those discussions and see if there is a viable option for us to start our police department back. What would, uh, where do you think uh, you're, would you draw the funding? Where do you think you can find the funding for that? Well, that's the great that's a great question. We already have the funding for it. We're paying the sheriff's department that eight hundred and thirty six thousand dollars for this year. And next year we don't know what it's going to be because the model that they have is they they base it on the year prior to um, calls for service and then that's what you pay for the following year or the next year excuse me so we have the funding in place uh, if we were to uh, do a phased in model for law enforcement we could have five officers which is a chief and four police officers for the first year and the pay and benefits is roughly about a hundred thousand dollars that includes medical dental vacation sick time and all that stuff so uh, just doing the math for that that's about five hundred thousand and then you add another each police vehicle is about fifty thousand. So you add another two hundred thousand dollars for the initial startup for your for your uh, vehicles, and you're still seven hundred thousand dollars. You have one hundred and thirty-six thousand dollars where you can uh, buy other equipment. You can buy rifles. A, a rifle doesn't cost that much. Nine hundred dollars. A handgun, seven hundred dollars. Uniforms, a thousand dollars. So you have those funds in there, and then you can look at. Uh, allocating those funds to other things. Uh, a maintenance is always going to be an issue. Uh, training is always going to be an issue. But for the first year, you have those officers which are on called probationary status. They don't, they're in normally in probationary status. They're not allowed to take vacation time. So you don't have to worry about covering overtime shifts and like uh, into that stuff. And then you would have the minimum requirement, which is mandated by state law, 24 hours per officer is required to have for um, a continuing education to provide that in there. We, we can do it. It is possible, and we could have better coverage after three years than what we currently have with the Sheriff's Department. Okay. Shirley, um, just getting back to you real quickly with the contract, you would like to stay with the Sheriff's mm -hmm. Office. There's been a, a little bit of <clears throat> grumbling I've heard at council meetings that they don't feel the Sheriff is, is there. There's slow response and things like mm -hmm. that. Will that be something that if you would, uh, you know, when the contract comes up, you would look at addressing with with the sheriff's office and say hey we have this because he's the sheriff was as you know was at council once and said mm -hmm. life seems good so. yeah, yeah. Um, I think that it again it goes back to educating the citizens we can the sheriff's office has run the uh, response times and they're good response times all there's always going to be glitches when they're either on a mutual aid call some they're at another call in medical lake and can't respond but I think it's that letting the citizens know we have the same coverage today that we had in 2009 when we had our own department. We do have the services of the sheriff's office with a captain who's available, with uh, support staff. We're not paying for those. So, um, so I think that uh, Mr. Suniga, the costs are more than, than, than he's outlining because we know it's gonna be more. And uh, there are so many vacancies in the sheriff's office, Washington State Patrol, other agencies have vacancies they can't fill. So we know we can't be competitive with salaries because we don't have that kind of money. And so how would we recruit officers? We had that problem in 2009, multiple, multiple vacancies. We couldn't recruit a chief for the salary we were able to provide. So we don't see that that has changed because our income in the city has not changed that much to reflect that we have a lot more money to pay. The, the chief would be a department head he would be expected and deserve a department head salary. Okay, great.
great. I just want to point out that it's it's. Uh, I find it surprising to me that the city didn't want to pay an extra ten thousand dollars for a chief, but then they would add a hundred to one hundred and thirty thousand dollars into their budget for uh, a police uh, contracting agency. Okay, Shirley, do you have a quick? Rebuttal on that? Or? You mean like a headhunter to hire? No, no, no. So in the spokesman review uh, 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 article in 2009, when we contracted with the sheriff's department, um, Je uh, Mr. Higgins said that uh, they had an ad 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 a candidate, an mm -hmm. applicant, that they offered the position mm -hmm. for, but he wanted more money, and they weren't uh, able, they w didn't want to do that. So instead of doing that, providing twenty, ten thousand dollars $10,000 more, we increased our, our budget to accommodate uh, that sheriff's department contract, which doesn't make good math to me. The, the, the candidate wanted more money. We were not able to give him that much money. Okay. Okay. Well, um, let's go on to issue number two. That's obviously a very, uh, there's quite a bit there. So, um, and issue number two, utilities, taxes, and, and water, fire, and whatnot. Um, again, there has been some discussion about the possibility of Medical Lake um, having its own full-time uh, fire department, from what I understand. Um, now, the chief is, uh, he is full-time, or is he he's just part-time? Okay. Mm -hmm. So everybody there is pretty much mm -hmm. part-time. Um, Michael? Volunteer. Vol volunteer. Exactly. Thank you. Um, Michael, why don't you, uh, your thoughts on the possibility? Sure. So, you know, it just comes down to the amount of money that we have in the pot. Uh, this time that the city cannot afford to have a 24-7 fire department and police department. It's not, it's not practical because we don't have the money. But what we do have and what we can afford is we can have a full-time fire chief or maybe uh, another full-time person in a fire department where those calls for service that are being missed by our fire department, and they do a great job, and they're volunteers just like you and me. We have other jobs that they volunteer their time to accommodate that could have that stopgap in there. But there's other programs that we can look at too, like uh, resident fire firefighters. That is a very successful program in Spokane County. And basically what that is, is they have uh, firefighters who have completed all the initial training to become a firefighter. And they're going through a fire science academy, whether it be Spokane Falls Community College or SEC, or pursuing a four year degree somewhere else, where they, in exchange for fire services, they allow them to have a a room basically in the fire department and their expectation is while they're there to respond for calls for service. So that would be a really great thing to have so that when uh, you call for EMS to come to respond that, um, that we don't have that issue where no one is coming. And when I say no one is coming, there is mutual aid. We do have mutual aid with AMR that's contracted to respond to uh, transport people, and we have Fire District 3. But mutual aid is supposed to be mutual, and it's not supposed to be, well, we don't have anybody because we can't man that station to come and respond. It's supposed to be, we are overstaffed, we are overrun by a current situation, and we, we need help. And that's what mutual aid is. And if we did have our own fire, our police department back, we can incentivize uh, officers to become EMT trained. So therefore, that increases our capabilities for EMS services uh, and to provide that. And that's just one more uh, way we can provide a better service to our community, which is, which is what the, our government should be providing, the best possible service in looking at new and, and uh, ideas to invigorate those processes. Okay, great, Shirley. Um, we, we don't have enough calls to justify a full-time department. We average about two calls a day. And 84% um, of those calls are EMS. <coughs> so I'd like to explore with AMR, you know, there's, they have an ambulance station at, near the Petro at the freeway, and we, they used to be stationed in Medical Lake for a while, short while. So explore with them how we can increase, decrease the difference in from where they're stationed to our city. Um, there are, I think there are some options on the table. We just need to sit down and have a conversation. But, I, and, and part of that is getting reimbursed from the state for the response times when we send uh, a crew to Eastern State Hospital or Lakeland Village. We should be getting reimbursed for that. So I think there are some options to look at. Okay. Um, well, let's do uh, issue number three. Okay. Moving right along here. And uh, investment and vision 
Um, as I mentioned before and, and has been in our paper, uh, the possibility of medical aid going over 5,000 people mm -hmm. uh, for the first time. Um, it's taken a while. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, and, and what that does, it, that changes mm -hmm. the financing a little bit, mm -hmm. your abilities for grants and mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. um, you, can you comment a little bit on that and then kind of have, you give me a little bit of your, your vision for what you see the, the, the city going in this direction, and Shirley will go with you. I don't want us to go over 5,000 population. Number one, I like living in a small town. That's why I live there. That's why most of the citizens live there. They like living in a small town. So um, it would be unfortunate if we went over 5,000 for a number of reasons. And one primarily is we're in a much smaller pool for grant money being under 5,000. When we go over 5,000, we're gonna compete with the big cities. And I think we will not have as a successful uh, grant cycle as we do now. Transportation Improvement Board is very generous with us. So um, it, it'll be unfortunate if we do go over 5,000. What I have uh, thought about is um, in our census, the residents at Lakeland Village and the patients at Eastern State Hospital are counted. Mm -hmm. At Eastern State Hospital, they don't live there forever. So are, is it appropriate that they're in our census? There are positives to having them in our census. There might be some negatives to having them in our census. So that's something I would like to sp explore with the Office of Financial Management, the benefits of, of counting a population that their average stay at Eastern is about 21 days. So why would they be counted as permanent citizens of, in medical aid? So I think that's something we can explore. That is interesting. That is kind of a genie's mm -hmm. uh, exactly. uh, bag as well, too. Yes. The students are there. They are counted. Uh, the Eastern Washington University students yeah. are counted. So um, where do you see the city going, at least, in the next uh, foreseeable future as far as, um, uh, you know, it, as its growth? I mean, and, and meeting your finan the financial mm -hmm. you uh, mm -hmm. needs. You guys have right. some financial not difficulties, but yeah. some challenges, obviously. Right. And, and what we really have are water issues. Mm -hmm. We, we are, can afford, uh, we are allowed 14 more water hookups. I think it's 12 now. Um, businesses that do come in will, may take more than one or two hookup equivalents. So um, that's really a, a predictor of growth is, is what we can bring in. Mm -hmm. I do support bringing in businesses. I think that... Um, we have experts in the field, uh, the West Plains Chamber of Commerce. Um, spoke West, uh, there is a new advocacy group coming into the West Plains for aerospace, mm -hmm. economic yes. development. I think we could partner with them and see if there are businesses that maybe would like to be in a small town. They don't need a lot of space, something like that. And um, I think there are experts that we could, I'd like to see a merchants association like Cheney has. So then let's, we may need to look at something other than retail. Retail is hard to support in a city of 5,000 people. It's hard to support in a city of 10,000. So can we um, encourage businesses that don't rely on retail? Service industry, for example, um, uh, attorneys, accountants, things like that that don't, that, that more could work from home or provide a service rather than a product. And, um, it would be great to have a laundry back in town. So, <laughs> so I think I would, I would very much support economic development, businesses coming in. Um, I want to keep it a small town. Okay, Michael, kind of this, the, the same format to you. Sure, um, so it's, it's it, in 2010, according to the US Census Bureau, Medical Lake was already over the 5,000. If you talk to the state, we are just been under it until this year. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I also took a look at how many cities are under 5,000 people. Out of the 589 cities in, Spo in Washington, 188 of them are higher than 5,000. So when they talk about the, those grants that we're going to be competing with, with, um, with more people and to get those big grants, I don't, I don't see it there. I see that we have we were competing with a pool of 400 applicants, and now we are competing with an applicant applicant pool of 189 applicants, including ourselves when we go in there. And, and our projects aren't going to be as big as the city of Spokane, city of Tacoma. We're going to be, you know, peanuts 
compared to those projects that they're going to be asking for grants. So I, I see it as a great opportunity for us to ex expand what we can do to, to uh, embrace that. Um, in regards to uh, our general fund, um, we, sh Ms. Mankey is absolutely right that we only have 14 more water hookups. But uh, several years ago, the city of Spokane brought a, a water hookup that's close to one of our well houses and wanted to enter in negotiations on maybe an emergency hookup for us. And, and that hasn't, that's failed, failed to materialize, um, whether it be on the half of the city of Spokane or half of the, well, maybe half of the city of Medical Lake. So that would be a very good contingency plan because heavens forbid, if one of our wells get contaminated with the PFAS, PFOA uh, stuff that's been right. plaguing the West Plains right now, we don't have a backup. We don't have an emergency plan in place that we can get water like the city of Airway Heights did uh, as an emergency basis to help support uh, their community. We don't. And, and, you know, t to get that funding in place and to build that, that stopgap measure would probably decimate our, our general, or excuse me, our um, reserve fund. And so looking at those options where we can be uh, fiscally responsible now to come up with those contingencies like the water issues and stuff like that, uh, I'm all for it. Um, bringing in those businesses, that's the key. How do we get people uh, to shop at our, our, our um our stores and Miss Makey again she hit it right on the head that those service industries are great but when you have a service industry where you have a light industrial area where they're not selling goods and services the only tax base that we get is from the property tax only on that business so if they're not providing those services like she mm -hmm. said with with um, you know um, lawyer services and stuff like that and we're not and they're not charging that sales tax Medical Lake doesn't get that money. Mm -hmm. So so how do we bring in more businesses? I think, uh, you know, following models like, like uh, Leavenworth, where they have a niche, you know, where they have a great community forum, where they have people that are coming to their tourism industry, that come into their communities, spend money at their stores, and, and then on the end of the weekend go home. I don't want our city to get huge, but but we need to look at those options to have to maintain those nice roads, to maintain those police and fire services that we have to start looking at uh, expanding so that we do have the, that control. And, you know, not to mention West Plains is poised for growth. Uh, the city of Spokane's border now is on the corner of 902 and Craig when they purchased some land for the airport property. So if, if we don't start taking control of our destiny around our borders, then we won't have the ability to control our destiny. And so that's what I want to look at. Okay. Well, great. Well, obviously there's a lot of things here, a uh, small town as it is, there's obviously a lot of issues and complexity. So, um, wish we had a little bit more time, but we're getting close to the end. I uh, want to thank you for, for coming first off. Um, but I will also, I'll also offer you, uh, about a minute or so to kind of final thoughts and a little summation and Michael, we'll start with you and then surely let you close. So if, if I'm honored to be your mayor, I'll be a servant leader. I would host town hall meetings to get that feedback um, instead of being in my, my, my close circle of, of people that I talk to. I want to serve you, and that's ultimately I want to do is I want to make our community better. I'm a firm believer that the, our politicians should only be in office for a smart, small amount of time to make the best that they can and then go back to their normal jobs, and that's what I'd like to do if, if I'm elected to be your mayor. Thank you very much. Surely. Thank you. I like living in a small town. I like um, being able to say hi to my neighbors, uh, knowing they're going to watch out for me and I'm going to watch out for them. I like being able to walk down the street and say hi to somebody I don't know, know they're going to say hi back. And I think most of the people who live in Medical Lake want those things too. Um, as your mayor, I will continue to make sure we enjoy the quality of life that we're enjoying today. It's a safe community, it's a secure community, and with your vote, I will continue that and enhance it. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I just want to thank you again, uh, particularly for running for office. It uh, is not an easy thing to do, and, and uh, it takes a little bit of uh, chutzpah and, and love of community. Um, to step up and do what you're doing. So thank you very much. And on behalf of Spokane Talks Online, this has been Canada Confidential. And I would like to thank you. And uh, we'll see you next time.